Hey, so this week I wanted to talk about something that I think could be one of the biggest secrets going around in transformation projects today. Um, so if we accept the premise that we are not able to continually do more with less, and I, I think to be fair, most people have generally accepted that as a fallacy now, this idea of um, taking 6% off year on year and gaining efficiencies out of thin air is sort of, you know, I, I think there's been a realization that that's just not going to happen. And so um, if we accept that as a fallacy and instead we look to gain those efficiencies through not trying to continually do the same work and to do more with less, but in actual fact to change the work that we do, and that's that transformation stuff I keep banging on about, so if we, if we accept that fallacy and then we accept the idea that um, it's about changing the work that we do to get more productivity and get a better outcome, then necessarily that change often involves business process re-engineering. It probably involves us thinking about doing different things for our customers and changing the way that we work. And if we look at the processes that are going on in our operations day to day, um, often we'll find that they're lacking or perhaps they need to be changed or there might be steps that we can pull out that um, are wasteful or inefficient or no longer necessary. And so very quickly we find ourselves in this place of business process redesign, um, designing waste out, um, designing work to do more valuable work for customers more often. Um, and through that, work then oftentimes we find ourselves in a situation where people are less busy than they used to be. Now nobody likes to think that the work that they're doing is wasteful or meaningless. Um, you know if you can get through that hurdle and create that safe space for your people to actually own up and say hey I don't think this works adding value we need to change it and if you've successfully created that environment at some point you're going to end up with a group of people who are less busy than they used to be because that work is no longer required, because the work has changed to be able to be more efficient and to do more things for our customers. And, and at that point, um, only the dummies realize the benefits. So often when we sell change programs, they're built on this idea of reducing resource cost, reducing labor cost. Reducing the people in our organization. I put to you that only a dummy would make that move. If you go through all of this process and you get to the point where you have people sitting around with idle hands and, and, and more capacity available, at that point I would suggest that you're short-sighted and silly to take those cost savings and bank them as benefits because all that does is give you a quick fix at a point in time and a quick hit and it doesn't go nearly anywhere near launching you into exponential growth and innovation and improvement. The real trick here in my opinion is to take those people who now have that spare capacity and to repoint them onto more valuable work. So rather than realizing the benefit and the cost saving and the reduction, let's be clear, rather than firing people and having them lose their jobs, rather than taking those efficiencies, if you were to repoint those people onto more valuable work, if you were to point those people at stuff that's going to make a difference for your customers, that value-based demand that's coming through, to use some of that systems thinking language, then all of a sudden, not only have you reduced your cost and reduced your overhead because you're starting to pull the waste out of the system, but on top of that, you're now doing more work that's of value to customers. All of a sudden, that linear growth curve that's when it kicks up a gear and starts to hit an exponential, um, in an exponential curve. So, um, you know, if you if you want to be on that track, if you're looking to move away from that linear mindset and into this exponential space where things can grow at a rate that is faster than you are comfortable with or, or capable of keeping up with. It's these types of things that need to change. We're no longer in that place where it's sufficient to be able to make a cost saving based on taking people's jobs out and replacing them with robots or whatever whatever it is. The, the real trick is to be able to, number one, create that safe environment so that people know that they can put their hand up and say, this is not valuable, we could do it differently and get efficiencies. Two, capitalize on that fact by 
making sure that you have those people available with that additional capacity to keep getting the rest of the work that is valuable across the line. And number three, when they really do have time on their hands, repoint them to the work that's more valuable for customers so that, that we're delivering more value more often. And at that point, that's when you start to get your exponential growth curve and your exponential thinking. So hit me up with a comment below. I would love to hear your opinion.